What's up, everybody? Welcome back into the Blueprint. Today we got our weekly MLB pod back for you. Um, just doing some quick MLB news this week. Um, you know, with the playoffs around the corner, I mean, we got 10 or so games left for, you know, every team. Um, you know, like three series, I think, left. Um, and so, obviously, there's going to be a lot of playoff implications here, a lot of teams have clinched or are about to clinch divisions, you know, playoff spots, all stuff like that. So, um, yeah, let's dive into it. I think there's only been two teams that have clinched a playoff spot um, so far. Obviously going to be many more to come here in the next few days um, and over the next week. As, you know, like I said, there's only this weekend, the next weekend's the last weekend. So we got, you know, nine or ten games left for basically every team. So, um yeah, but today we got the Yankees. I want to talk about that? Talk about them mainly, um, and then also the National League. The Brewers ended up clinching the NL Central, um, and yeah, I'll talk about that as well because you know, as a Cub fan, it kind of uh, frustrates me. Um, not necessarily just this year, but you know, the last few years, it's just been the Brewers' division. You know, they've kind of owned the NL Central now for. You know, the last, like I said, the last five, six years. And, you know, obviously teams like the Cardinals have won the division um, once or twice there recently. But, you know, it's been, it basically been the Brewers' division. Um, but like I said, let's start with the Yankees, man. You know, they have been playing some good baseball, winning seven the last ten, winning three in a row, um, getting hot at the right time. You know, they've, you know, clinched the playoff spot. They haven't clinched the division yet, but the Orioles have been struggling now five games behind the Yankees. Um, so there's a wide gap there uh, where it was the other day, just one and a half, two games felt like the whole year separating those two teams. And, you know, what, I, what I'd like to see is the Yankees pitching has been really good recently. Um, you know, they've, they've gotten good starting pitching. Obviously, we all know what Aaron Judge brings to the table um, and Juan Soto, but, you know, they've started to get some more contributions from other guys um, in the lineup which is going to be huge. I think this is the year that the Yankees finally break through and get to the World Series. Um, and mainly it's because of, like what I said, I think the starting pitching is, you know, deeper than what it has been, um, you know, the past few years where it's been kind of top-heavy with just Garrett Cole and then kind of go from there. Uh, obviously, Garrett Cole hasn't had that great of a season. Um, but you've got guys like Luis Gill, um, you know, Nestor Cortez, Carlos Rodon, those type of guys that are having good quality seasons. Um, you know, I think that's that's been important. Marcus Stroman as well. Um, all guys with ERAs right under four or right above four, but you know, those are still solid. You know, I think all these guys are, you know, pretty solid pitchers. And, you know, I think with the offense that they got um, – and to be honest with you, I don't really view many teams outside maybe like the Royals or the Tigers who are both playing good baseball now. Um, and the Tigers are really, really hot right now as well, trying to push for a wild card spot. Most of these teams don't have dominant starting pitching in, in the American League. You know, Most of these teams are kind of led by the offense. Um, and with that said, you know, I think you know, the Yankees' offensive firepower is just – with Juan Soto now, in addition to Aaron Judge, is just a whole different level. Um, and you still got the veterans like Stan, you know, Verdugo, Rizzo. Um, you got Volpe starting to, you know, hit hit well um, here down the stretch. Uh, Glaber Torres. You just got a bunch of older guys, or and obviously Volpe's not old, but you know, guys that have been in the postseason before. Um, guys who've had great careers like Stan and Rizzo, um, and so you know, I think. With the depth that they now have, I think it's, you know, those type of guys are going to have to be big because you know what you're going to get from guys like Judge and Soto. But if other guys step up, the lineup's just going to be very scary for opposing pitchers um, to deal with come the postseason. And, and so I, I do think the Yankees, you know, they haven't won the World Series or been in the World Series in quite some time. And, you know, they've had a lot of success getting to the postseason winning divisions, obviously last year you know, struggled with injuries and, you know, just as a team didn't quite have the season they were wanting. Obviously, when they miss the playoffs, it's a big story because they are the Yankees. 
Um, but, you know, I think Aaron Judge hasn't had that, you know, he's had good moments for sure in the playoffs, but he hasn't had the, you know, obviously carried the team to the World Series. And now with, like I said, the additions to the pitching staff, the depth there in terms of, you know, quality and rotation. And then, you know, with Juan Soto, another super, superstar with, with you in the lineup, I think Aaron Judge is finally going to break through and get to the World Series, um, have a big playoff run. It's kind of, I think it's his moment. Um, whether they win or not, I'm not sh- not going to make my prediction until, you know, the playoffs are here. But I think in the American League, they are by far the team to beat. You know, I think teams like the Guardians, the Orioles, the Astros, the Royals, um, are, I mean, I think one of those teams is going to get hot. Um, you know, it's whoever gets hot at the right time. I think the Yankees are playing good baseball, and I think they are the most talented team. Um, but they are going to be challengers for sure. You know, I think a team like the Royals have good pitching. They have, they have they obviously have the superstar in Bobby Witt. Um, but, you know, I, I just – I'm still not super high on the Guardians or the Astros. And obviously the Orioles are kind of a younger team um, that – has a lot of injuries to the starting rotation that, you know, they, they are Corbin Burns heavy reliant. So, um, with that said, I think the Yankees are definitely the team to beat, you know, moving forward. Um, in the National League, like I said, the Brewers winning the division. The two teams, the Yankees and Brewers, have clinched. Um, you know, the Brewers are just a good, good organization. They lost Corbin Burns to the Orioles. They lost their second best pitcher, Brandon Woodruff, for the year in injury. You know, their best reliever has been up and down with injury this year. Um, missed some time early in the year. You know, Christian Yelich, one of their better offensive players um, and hitters, have, has missed time and I think is missing the year now, um, the rest of the season. And they just continue to find ways to win. I mean, whether it's, you know, small ball or getting, you know, guys to overachieve tremendously, they just find ways to always have – you know, good teams, and, you know, ever since 2018, so the Cubs had their run, you know, this is what I'm going to talk about now, the Cubs had their run from 2015 to 2017 of getting to the NLCS, so the Final Four, essentially, um, in baseball, obviously winning the World Series in 2016, and then in 2018, the Brewers came about, and, you know, them and the Cubs were back and forth kind of the whole year. Uh, or late in the year, and the Brewers ended up beating them to win the division by a game, um, and then the Cubs obviously lost in the wild card. And since then, the Brewers have kind of owned this division. Um, the 2020 season, the COVID year, the shortened season, the Cubs did win the division, but I don't make much of that. Um, other than that season, the Brewers have basically won the division every single year with, I think, just one to the Cardinals, I forget what year it was, but either way, I the Brewers have just been a better team, better organization, better ran than the Cubs, getting guys to overachieve, um, and so that's that's the most disappointing part because the Cubs, like baseball's, you know, the different sport compared to football and basketball, where it's there's no salary cap. You know, teams like the Cubs, teams like the Dodgers, teams like the Yankees, teams like the Mets, the Red Sox, um, the Giants, those type of teams that have, you know, money to spend should be always in playoff contention at the very least. Um, And that's where the Cubs have kind of underachieved. So it's just a scenario where I think the Cubs have underachieved yet yet again um, to some degree, and then the Brewers have overachieved. So... um, that's just my take on it. You know, I think what hurts the most is the Cubs stole the Brewers manager, um, giving him a huge contract, and it's still the same results, you know. So I, the Cubs got to figure it out this offseason. Whether or not they bring back guys like Bellinger, um, who could – well, obviously, Bellinger's got to opt out, um, which, you know, I love Belly, but given his production, it does not scream – what he's about to be owed, so that's the only downfall um, with him opting back in. You know, he's going to opt into, I think, 27 mil, um, or he could opt out, which I personally don't think he'll do. I mean, it's 27 million for a guy who's had a good season, but he's also been hurt multiple times this year, and 
the power numbers have not been there um, with seasons that we've seen from him. So it's a weird situation for the Cubs. They don't have a much, they don't have many spots on this roster that they need to fill. I mean, a lot of guys are under contract or, you know, going to be here. So unless they make some trades or whatever, it's going to be very similar roster. Um, you know, they're going to have to make some tweaks to figure it out. But, you know, if they don't, you know, it's, I'm going to be very upset because they need to make changes. You know, that's Cubs should be in the playoffs every single year, um, or at least in the hunt. And, you know, this year has just been disappointing. And give give credit to the Brewers. You know, they've been the better team in this – the best team in this division all season. You know, they've comfortably had a lead um, – a wide, wide lead in this in this division basically all year, um, and so with that said, they they deserve a lot of credit. But it's a time, it's time for a team like the Cubs to take it back because it's like I said, it's no salary cap. There's no real excuse. I mean, when you have the brand and the team and the organization the Cubs have to spend money and you know everything like that, you know it's it's time to you know stop making. Stop missing the playoffs entirely um, and start having that success that you've had, you know, back in 2015, 16, 17, 18. So, yeah, with that said, man, uh, appreciate you all for tuning in. You know, we'll be back next week with a bunch of more teams that have clinched, I'm sure. And then, you know, the week after we'll be doing our MLB predictions um, for the playoffs and everything. So, yeah, once once more teams start to clinch, we'll be breaking that down for you as well. Um, and, yeah, I'll give, give you your – given my final takes about the Cubs season um, teams have clinched as well. And yeah, man, we'll be, we'll be back next week. Like always. And appreciate y'all.